Good morning, everybody. This is Bishop Spofford Crawford coming to you live this morning from my dining room. <laughs> Hopefully, in the near future, I'll be able to come to you in person in United Fellowship Church of God Prophecy, standing in my pulpit, in our pulpit. I, won't, I can stop saying mine. This is not mine. It's not my church. It's our church that God has loaned us to have worship service in. Well, thank God for the building. We're still working at it. We're very hard on it. We're trying to repair some places that need to be repaired. And I got a whole lot of things, a lot of irons in the, what they call it, in the fire. So hopefully something will materialize and help us get some other things going. Amen. All righty then. Thank you again for all your goodness and all your faithfulness that you do for God and for his church. Appreciate it so much. And I know the Lord does too. And as I always said, the Lord will reward you. <clears throat> I can't reward you for what you're doing, but God can. If you just remain faithful, the Lord will reward you in due time, in his time. He will reward you. All right. We're here again this morning. Thanking God for, I thank him for just being alive this morning. I, earlier this morning, I prayed and I said, Lord, I thank you for being alive and the blood still running warm in my veins. And I'm able to say thank you. And I, I really appreciate what the Lord has done for us and to us and through us. <clears throat> in these 40 some years that I have served him in this capacity. It's, a, it's a been a blessing. It's been a, a great blessing. And hopefully he will bless me. I'm not hopefully. I know he will bless me somewhere in the future if I remain faithful myself and be able to go back and live with him and be with him forever. That's my hope and my aim that I can do that. All right. Okay, mm, I don't have any special announcements this morning. I, I miss being in the church where I can, my announcer would come up and do the announcements and all those great things. Uh, so we don't know yet. I, I want you to still remember, remember Sister Paulette and her sister's family in the time of the bereavement that has been going on now for over a week. Uh, the funeral is going to be Saturday coming, and hopefully everything will work out fine for them. But keep them in your prayers as you pray. Remember Sister Paula and her sister's children. She had two girls. Remember those, those girls? I know they were really going through. And, and one thing, the longer, sometimes the longer you keep someone from being buried, it, it grieving goes along a, hard, a, little, a little harder sometimes rather than doing the funeral and getting it early, done early. But anyway, God is able. Okay, my thought, my thought this morning that I have to share with you is in, in whom do we trust? In whom do we trust? Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you again for allowing me to be here this morning and to serve you in this capacity as a as a minister, as a pastor, as a servant, to do your will. I thank you, Lord. You've been with me for these 40-some years as I've served in the capacity of, of ministering. And I, I thank you. You've kept me well most of the time. I've had my ups and i had my downs. I've had my sickness, my sick days. Hopefully they're over. Hope I don't have many more of those. But I've been through that, and I, I just, I'm reminded of the scripture where you said, if you, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. So I've had, I think, I hope I've had my times of suffering and in that respect. But who knows? Who knows what tomorrow holds? If you have to go through some things, then go through them. God will help you and to manage through it. And he'll take you through it. 
can give you the strength that you need when you're going through. Lord, bless these few words that I have written down this morning, that they be blessing to those who are looking and listening this morning to hear what it is that you have for them this morning in this word. If you do this for us, Lord, we'll be so careful. We'll give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. All shall be yours. For well, these blessings and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Continue to remember those that are abiding in their homes, some that are still sick and suffering, Lord, of one sickness of another. But Lord, you're able to heal all manner of sickness. There's nothing that you cannot do. Even this pandemic, we're still in the, in the midst and the hopefully we'll in the end of this and, and pandemic that you uh, will lift it all. I know you could if you would want it to. You could just speak the word and it will be over. But that's all in your hand, Lord. We're just serving as we can serve and being what we can be in this hour. So bless us, I pray. And if you do this for us, Lord, we give your name and praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. In whom do we trust? Let me read some scriptures from Proverbs, the third chapter. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture there, but down to maybe the sixth verse. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Man, that's a lot that's said in that first scripture. My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments. You know, we only have, we only have 10 that we observe. I understand that, uh, I think in the Jewish law, they have 60. But anyway, uh, 60 or 600. But anyway, we have 10 and we have, we struggle to keep these 10 commandments that we have. But anyway, he said, if you keep them, he said, for length of, thy, of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Said, Don't you want to live long, a peaceful life? I do. That's what I'm trying to live now. I want to live this long, peaceful life. And when my time comes for me to leave this world and enter into a, to hopefully another world that I'll be able to do that with the blessings of the Lord. But when you keep his commandments, he, this is a promise. It's for the length of days and a long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And this is my last book. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. See, when you acknowledge the Lord, you don't have to worry about directing your path. Because if you stand true to him, he has already promised that he will direct your path. All you have to do is walk therein as he leads you and directs you if you stick to his word and to his commandments and live them to the best of your knowledge and ability. Okay. Let me get to my message. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I'm not sure any of us truly trust in God with our whole heart. It is easy to say it, say that we do. But wait until a crisis comes in our life that we seem not be able to handle. We start looking everywhere 
for answers except God. And he has the perfect answer just waiting just for you to ask him. But most of the time, we want to lean to our own understanding. I can figure this out. I ain't got the answer to this. I don't need no help. I don't need to ask nobody to help me. I can do this on my own. That's the attitude that so many have in the society in which we live today. Amen? But wait until the crisis comes that we seem to not be able to handle. We look everywhere except God. A lot of the time, we put God as our last resource for our answer. When he should be first. So, what does it mean to trust God with all our heart? We live in a world of exceeding pride in human knowledge and accomplishments. The information humanity has amassed is more than any individual can fully comprehend. And it is almost insanely available. This little phone, this little phone right here, this little phone that we carry around in our pocket, a pocketbook, has instant information I told my wife one day, if I would have had this kind of information when I was in school, I would have made much better grades in school. Of course, I'm pretty sure if I had brought this to class, my teacher would have said, bring all the phones up here and put them on my desk. You can pick them up after class is over. Amen. I'm just sure that's what would have happened if we'd have had these phones when I was in school. You can ask Google almost any question, and it will give you a credible answer. We're also surrounded by a culture that we desire and rights of the individuals are considered the greatest good, where I can have whatever I want, or be whatever I want to be, regardless of how anyone else feels about it, including God. Hmm. We say as long as it doesn't harm others or keep them from their own desires, it doesn't matter. It won't hurt nobody. So let me leave, leave me alone. Let me do my thing. In these times, Christians should remind themselves that there is a God who in time to come, they will have to answer to what, what and how they have behaved in this life. He has so much offered to us in this world that unless you have an old, down, home, sanctified, holy field life and have surrendered our old life to him and living in the promises of God and knowing that he has our best interest in his hands. We sometimes miss the mark. To trust in the Lord means more than believing in who he is and what he says. The word here, trust, can, can also mean to have confidence in something means having assurance in something that leads to action. Trust in the Lord is a faith that lets us boldly serve. Today we live in a world that is very hard to get people to be committed to anything other than what they can see or feel. So, you know, if it feel good, do it. If it don't feel good, it ain't right. But everything that feel good ain't right. When we have confidence in the Lord, it should, ref should refuse our whole being, infuse our whole being. There are times the devil reminds me that I could have lived a life in a very different way. 
Matter, when a matter of fact, when I think about it, I had no idea I, the Lord was going to call me to be a preacher. Although I did a lot of, <clears throat> of preaching, messing around. Well, I won't tell you all that. And I had to remind him that I am glad that I did what I did. And believe that the devil knows when we have sold out for the Lord and where we are. And if we are not sold out and we're pretending to be sold out and we haven't sold out to the Lord, the devil knows that too. Don't you know that? Because he he don't he can't read our mind. But when he hears what comes out of our mouth, that's what he that's what he treads on. You see, when you sell out for the Lord, all of our knowledge wisdom and will should be saturated in the action producing assurance of the Lord. When we lean not to our own understanding, we trust our knowledge and discernment to support us through life. As Jeremiah 17 and 9 tells us, the problem with this is that the heart is deceitful above all things in our body and desperately sick or wicked. Who can understand it? Listen, if you lean to your, you do, you do everything that comes to your, in your heart, you might do the wrong thing. But if your heart hasn't been saturated with the Spirit of God, you, you can't control that thing. Our own sinful nature can't be counted on. You can't count on how you feel. You can't count on what's going on that you think you can you have in control. Listen, but new hearts are given by Christ through the Holy Spirit. We cultivate God trusting hearts by meditation on scripture. And spending some time in prayer. How much time do you spend in prayer? A couple of minutes? Ten minutes? Ten seconds? You need to spend some time in prayer. See, in prayer is a time that you talk to the Lord personal. It's a personal experience that you, between you and God, when you are talking to him directly, and he's talking back to you directly. If you see, there's one thing, when you pray, you ought to pray for a while, and then stop and listen to the Spirit, and let the Spirit speak to you for a few minutes. That way you, you have some understanding of what God is trying to say to you. You got to spend some time in prayer, not two seconds. You know, you know, I used to have this prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I could die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And go to sleep. But that's not spending enough time in prayer to speak to your God and allow him to speak back to you in two seconds. Five minutes, five seconds? No, that's not enough. But you need to spend some quality time in the scripture as well. It, this is this Bible, this is the living word of God. Most of you, most of you young people and old people too, if you got one of these little old phones in your pocket, you've got the word of God with you every day. All you need to do is look up some scripture. If you like me, I got a daily devotion on mine. I spend some time in devotion with the Lord every day in my little devotion. You got to, you got to, if you don't have a Bible version on your phone, you need to get one. You need to go to the Play Store and look up one of these Bibles and put it on your phone so you have the word that you can occasionally read his word. It's the word that directs you. You need the word of God in you, living in you every day of your life. And spend some time in prayer talking with the Lord and allowing the Lord to talk back to you. And companionship with other believers. 
This is why I don't understand why so many people today don't attend church. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day on the golf course. And we, I said, you know, people just don't go to church no more. And I, I think we're, we're spoiling some right now about doing what we're doing right now. We're preaching on the internet and on the Facebook, you know, YouTube, or whatever. That's going to, that's, that's spoiling a lot of people. A lot of people ain't going to want to come back to church. I hope they do. But it is. I mean, what's, what's, isn't it easy for you to lay in bed and look at your phone or look at your TV or look at your screen and get on Facebook and relax and listen? Sure it is. But you miss the cut that. What you miss is all that companionship and fellowship that we have one to another when we are in each other, in the midst of each of us. Uh, each other. I understand since this pandemic, we have not been able to come together. Man, I miss your smiling faces. Even when you don't want to smile. You know, sometimes I say, well, smile and make you feel better. You know, I look at that, I look at it in the audience and some be trying to smile. They don't really want to smile. But that's, that's good too. I can look at you, you pretend that you are smiling. And these things tune our hearts to the spirit living in us. We will rely less on ourselves and more on Christ. Serving him in good times and bad times. Listen, every day is not going to be like Sunday, as they so to speak. That's an old saying. It means that every day ain't going to be like this. I mean, you're going to have some bad days and you're going to have some good days. And he said, in, in sickness and in health. Sounds like somebody getting married, huh? I guess so. In battle with sin and peace of his rest. You're going to have some problems. Listen, the devil is going to make sure you have some problems. He might work on one of your kids. Make them act all up. Make you worry. Have something to worry about. They, they go off sometimes, run off somewhere, and you don't know where they are, and you're all worried about them. The, the devil has, the devil has a way to, to upset your good days. He'll bring in enmity <laughs> between you and your wife if you ain't killed. Acknowledging God means knowing God Wherever we are and whatever we are doing. This doesn't just mean intellectual absence. It is not about what we know, but what he is constantly putting into our spirit. It is an act of perceiving his character and will in every moment of life. If we dedicate ourselves to trusting and seeking God in all circumstances, are we then to believe that life will be easy? Not so. That doesn't make life easy. Matter of fact, I'll be more trouble. That doesn't mean that no trouble will be set us. We have all experienced enough of life to know that that isn't the case. Instead, we can expect is that our journey will be ultimately and will lead him and we will not be shaken when trials come. And let me tell you something. As I said a few minutes ago, we're going to be tried somewhere or another. If it ain't loved by one of our kids that don't want to act right. Or uh, the husband don't want to act right. Or wife don't want to act right. There are trials come in all forms. And there's no way to get around it. It's, it'll come sooner or later. Jeremiah 17 gives us clarity. It states, 
Who trusts in the Lord? And whose trust is the Lord? He's like a tree planted by the water that sends out <coughs> its roots by the stream and does not fear when he comes. For his leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. That's seven and eight. When I accepted the call to go for the Lord in 1972, I never forget that morning the Lord called me into the ministry. And he simply said, it is time. And as I said, I stood there for a while. I heard his voice, but I didn't see no one. But after standing there for a moment, I felt a presence of Almighty God like I never felt before. And I knew that it was God who was speaking to my heart. I was horrified. I didn't know what to expect. But I knew I had to answer the call and end up like, or either end up like Jonah, miserable and lonely. lonely. I stepped out on trust. And I have never looked back. Now and then, I am reminded by the enemy of my soul that I made a mistake. That I should have went another direction. But that's, well, that's a lie, and I know. See, Satan is, you got to remember this. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. He don't know what if the truth is that it slapped him straight in the face. He wouldn't know what hit him. So don't ever, don't mistake when the Lord got you in a direction to go, you go that direction. The Lord, the Lord is, if he's with you, it doesn't matter if the whole world is against you. But if God is with you, you are all right. But now, so my trust is in the Lord. People put trust in houses and land and other things. But believe me, only when we put our trust in the Lord is when everything falls into place. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Don't be half-hearted about the thing. If you get half-hearted about something, you won't do, you'll end up doing nothing. But if you go into something full-hearted, you'll end up doing what the Lord has asked you to do. And if, see, here's the thing. In this world, people will never be completely satisfied with what you do, or how you do it, or when you do it. But remember this, God is the one whom we are trying to please. And if we, as I was saying, if we please the Lord, the people will be pleased some of the time, but not all of the time. But So you're not trying to please people. You're trying to please the Lord. So trust in the Lord with your whole heart if possible. And it is possible. If it wasn't possible, it wasn't, he wouldn't have put it in the Word that we can trust in the Lord with our whole heart. You can, but your trust in the Lord. I listen, I, I, I'm reminded of people like the Apostle Paul. When he was on the road to Damascus, they're going to destroy some Christians. And the power came and knocked him off the horse and blinded him. And all those good things that happened to him, they, they were bad at that moment. But they were good things that happened to Paul. It straightened him out, brought him back to his senses to know that if, if he put that half of that, in, that energy that he was putting into trying to destroy Christians, to do a service for the Lord, he'd be a good man. And that boy, when that boy started, and he made his mind up that he was going to trust the Lord with his whole heart and serve the Lord with, with all that was in him, that man stirred to change the whole world at that particular time and in that area, in that part of the world. That boy couldn't stop. He went from town to town, from places to places, and establishing churches and 
working for the Lord, and may he made more, more imprint, as I think, on any person in this Bible. That's what God would do for you if you put your trust in him. Don't put your trust in homes and houses and cars and things of this nature, but put your trust in God, in God, in God, and he will direct your path. Amen? God bless you this morning, church. Hopefully I've said something that'll be a blessing to you. Go in peace today. Go in joy today. Go in happiness today. Enjoy the good Lord. Enjoy the blessing that God has bestowed upon you. Listen, if you are breathing right now, that's a blessing. If you have good health right now, that's a great blessing. Don't belittle nothing that the God has done for you. For it's all his mercy and his grace. God bless you. Bow your head with me, Father in heaven. Lord, I thank you for these few, few words that you've given me this morning. Put in our trust in you. I know it's not going to be easy. It has never been easy. I've been doing this for 40 some years now. It wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy all the time. But there are some times and some moments that it has been great and exciting and full of grace and mercy. Your presence means so much to me. When I can feel your presence, feel like I've said sometime in the church, I can feel the spirit running up and down the avenues of my soul. There's nothing like that feeling. Thank you for that feeling, Lord. Don't ever take that away from me. Please let me always feel your presence. Bless this church, bless every member, wherever they be this morning, wherever they're doing right now. Let them know you love them. Let them feel the inspiration of your spirit. Bless us as we go forward in the ministry. Help us, Lord, to achieve what it is that you would have us to achieve, that you may get the blessings and the glory out of all that we do. But we do it for one of these days we're looking for. A place somewhere around your throne that we can live and reign with you forever. Bless this church. Bless the, bless the district. Bless the district pastors this morning, all those that are serving you in the way that we are serving you right now over the airwaves and however. Bless each and every church this morning in this district for me that I am responsible for. Bless them and keep them in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask these blessings and all the blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you out there. May heaven smile upon you. May you be enriched with all of his goodness and his mercy as you go his way throughout this day, as you serve him in the beauty of holiness and grace. Amen. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. See you again next week, Lord will.